Lorraine Gertrude Workman Nee Madigan, born March the 2nd, 1936, to Clara Angelina Berthlot and Joseph George Madigan. I was born at 99 John Street in Barrie, Ontario, Canada. My oldest sister, Pat, was born August the 27th, 1929. She married Wilfred O'Shell, and they were married for almost 40 years, or a bit longer, uh, when he passed away. They have seven children. Uh, my next sister, Rena, was born January the 18th, 1931. She married... James Beverly Drummond, and they were married uh, 40 years or more, and they have three children. Uh, my brother Dennis, he was born October the 22nd, 1933, and he was married to Frances Kenny and is now married to Jean and... Dennis and Fran had three children. Uh, then there's my brother Bill, Billy. Uh, he was born January the 9th, 1935, and unfortunately at three and a half, he was hit by a car and passed away. My sister Rena and I were with them at the time. We were crossing the road, and the stories we get was his shoe uh, came off and he went back onto the road to retrieve it or he dropped a sucker on the road and went back to retrieve it. Uh, my next sibling is Bobby uh, Maureen who was born September the 4th, 1937. She married Merle Coulter and they had four children. Uh, they were married for almost 35 years, I think it was. Uh, my brother Frank was born May the 27th, 1939. He married Pat, I forget what her maiden name was. They have three children. Uh, Pat and Frank are no longer together. My sister Colleen was born July the 5th, 1940. She married Asel West. Uh, they are both passed away and they had five children. Brother Larry was born November the 7th, 1943. Uh, he and his first wife Ruth had two boys. He is now married to Mary. I had a, a brother, Billy. Uh, he was a year and a half older than I was. And at one time, my mother wanted something at a grocery store at the corner of Bradford and John Street. And my sister, Rena, she was six, and she was going to go to the store for my mother. So she took Billy and myself with her. We got across the road to go to the store, and coming back, there's two different stories. One say is he dropped a sucker, and the other is his shoe come off and he let go of Rena's hand to go back and pick up whatever the right story was. And he was struck by a car and pretty well killed instantly now. Um, my mother's nickname for him, he got captain uh, for the three and a half years. He had long, curly, blonde hair. Now when 
Johnson, my first child, was born. He had blonde hair, blue eyes, and my mother always called Kevin Captain. Kevin reminded his Nana of my brother Bill. My earliest childhood memory is breaking my leg on a tree going down a hill on a sleigh and uh, my oldest older brother Dennis had my sister Bobby and I down there and he had to go home for a minute and it wasn't very far from home and he said to us don't go down that hill until I come back. Well, you never told me to don't do it. And we went down and I ran into a tree. Bobby was at the back of the sled and I give my leg a pretty bad break. Um, did not get any sympathy from my mother. Um, didn't feel sorry for me at all. Six. I was born at 99 John Street, and when I was two and a half, we moved to 49 Sanford Street. It was a clapboard house, a very large kitchen, three bedrooms, and uh, with nine of us being raised there because we hadn't lived there a couple of months when Billy was killed. Uh, we slept sometimes three in a bed, three girls, some on the couch in the dining room, uh, but uh, what we would do, we'd put sheets on the stairs and slide down the stairs on the house. Uh, we were not allowed in the front room because once my father retired because that was his room. Um, one bathroom, uh, there was, uh, I remember my mother doing dishes in an old battered uh, silver dish pan and that I, as a stubborn child, would only dry one cup, one spoon, one fork, one knife one plate if it was my turn to dry and that's all I'd put away if it was my turn to put the dishes away and just my mother just couldn't make me uh, do any more. I didn't realize hey that food come out of pots and pans that were dirty. My mom was a very kind person. She thought of other people before she thought of herself. Uh, she pretty well raised us by herself because my father was on the railroad and worked in Horn Pain and he might get home every two to three months. Um, and uh, mom never missed anything of any of us that we did at school uh, and then she when we were pretty well all growing up she finally got to do something she loved doing and she was the leader of the sea cadets in Barrie uh, quite active in that um, and and everybody was welcome in our house and her her rule was if we have a slice of bread and that's all we have and somebody comes you cut it in half and each one of you has a half I have that to thank my mom for she taught me not to be selfish a very unselfish woman and once grandchildren came she always had toys in the dining room uh, for these kids to play they couldn't wait to get to Nana's to play with those toys. And I also remember uh, my mother was a very patient woman and she'd put us in our bedroom for to be punished and the roof sloped down 
to you could just almost step off the roof. It was a little jump and I knew, hey, in about 15 minutes, it would be time that I would be called down. You can go out and play again or do this. And there was a tree, so I'd get out in that roof and go down and, and play down there and then climb that tree back up just in time for my mother to uh, call me and tell me I could come out <laughs> out of my bedroom. And maybe she knew. And other times, um, Frank and I, when I started to work, my mother signed more notes giving me and Frank permission, Frank wasn't even working part-time, to rent a um, motorboat from Delaney's Boathouse and go out in Kempenfelt Bay and, and for about an hour, an hour and a half, my mother wrote many a note she didn't know she wrote. Um, I did that. Now if my kids did that, I think I'd be mighty angry, but I did it and it was fun. Yeah. Okay, my father started out on the railroad as a conductor. Now it was the CNR railroad, and in latter years he became a rule instructor, which is like a teacher. He teaches the new employees the rules of their job and safety rules. He held classes in a railroad car. I saw this, it's sitting up in Capriol and I went in and toured it and it's got pictures of him in there and he was to uh, one of the best rule instructors people say that have known him. Uh, the railroad was a big part of the Madigan family. Beside my father, my brother Bud was a railroader. His son was a railroader and was working the day he took sick with meningitis. Uh, my brother Bud, as you know now, ended up being a doctor. My brother Frank was a railroader until retirement. My grandmother and grandfather Madigan, I didn't know. I remember Grandma Madigan at the house once on Sanford Street. And this, she's walking down the stairs and she says, Oh my God, I just died. My heart stopped. Scared the heck out of my sister, Rena. Uh, then I've never seen Grandpa Madigan at Sanford Street. Now, we did go to Point of Barrel, and we didn't know it, but and Grandma Madigan was dead, laid out in the railroad station, and poor Grandpa Madigan in the dirtiest of shirts and crying. My Grandma and Baba first lot, I remember them well. They only lived 15 miles away, and Grandpa had was a nymph. Uh, Baba was a nymph. Uh, he'd make us all make noise and Grandma would yell at us to be quiet and Baba would say, now many, they're only children. And Grandma and Baba had a back kitchen and they had lots of raspberry bushes. And you'd go out at raspberry time and that back kitchen was full of raspberry pies. They had a note house for a bathroom. I'm out there one time and a snake come under the door when I was in there. Uh, but um, they they were great. As I say, Baba was an instigator and Grandma, Grandma lived until she was 83 and Baba, I think he died about two years after he started to walk. He got leukemia, and they said it was probably caused from the fall. Uh, but uh, great people. Yeah. When when we were young, well, we would play hopscotch, Red Rover, Red Rover, 
And we had an island down at the end of the street, my friend Ina and I, and we would spend hours on there, uh, and there would be uh, bulrushes that we'd pull and flowers that we'd pull, and we made this island pretty exciting, I'll tell you, in the middle of a creek. Is My first school was St. Mary's School. Uh, it was at the top of a hill on Mulcaster, and at the bottom was the jail. And when I started high school, I went to the Barry Collegiate Institute. It was closer to home than St. Joseph's High School. Okay, back at school, we uh, when we made our first communion or first or our confirmation, um, we had to borrow white socks from somebody else, and the girl that you borrowed them from let everybody know she's she's wearing my socks, and that that was hard on kids, uh, but made some good friends there because there were other families that were in the same boat as my family was, and we. Uh, together and had fun. As a teenager, uh, I took swimming lessons at the Berry Beach, and then I took my bronze medal and became a lifeguard. Uh, only had to use it once, and the poor man, he had drowned, and bringing him in with the hook in his bathing suit was, I thought, I don't need this anymore, and, and quit doing that, but I loved swimming, just loved it to no end. My mother took us once and we went over our ankles and she called us all out of the water. She was so afraid of water. But My best friends at St. Mary's School was Margaret Kenny, uh, Joan Bruce, and Ina Daly. Now, in high school, it would be Marlene uh, Harris and Shirley Begardus, who lived at the end of the street. My mother uh, said uh, I had to go to school until I had a job. And I certainly did not enjoy school because didn't seem to fit in. We didn't have the same clothes as, as other children had. And one day in high school, I left school and went down to United Cigar Store and they hired me as a waitress. And uh, I really wanted to be a nurse, but just couldn't hack out anymore, finish my graduation. I did get accepted at St. Michael's for a uh, registered nursing assistant and I did not go. I just backed out of that and worked. Uh, United Cigar Store was my first job, my first full-time. Going to high school I worked at Penguin Fish and Chips part-time. Uh, and from United Cigar Store, I went to the CNR restaurant, and from there, I went to uh, the Copaco, a food processing plant. And my last job was working for the school board here, which was actually my best job. Okay, I worked at Copaco in Berry, which was a meat processing plant. I worked in the area where sausages were made. I linked the sausages and wieners, uh, hung them on racks before they went into the smokehouse, and uh, head cheese was made there, and uh, the hog kill, I worked on that. Uh, that was fun, um, but uh, very exciting. Never a dull mo moment there. I 
One time I hung myself on the liver rack instead of hanging the liver. I have a scar in my leg where I had stitches from, from doing that, and uh, that was my job there. The school board, I was a cleaner. I would go in and wash down desks, sweep floors, and do washrooms, and had no boss there. We were just on our own working there, and that was a great job. Uh, my favorite things in school was math and spelling. I was in grade four, and grade eight was having a spelling bee, and the teacher from grade eight come up and got me to take part in this spelling bee, and I was the second last one to go down. Um, and now what is the next thing? My least favorite? Oh, was geography and history. Uh, it's so funny. In, in grade 10, we were taking about Africa, and I was talking to Pat Wanamaker, uh, because I wasn't interested in Africa, and Mr. Knox asked me, uh, Miss Madigan, are you not interested in Africa? And I said, oh, no. Yeah, I'll never get there, and if I do, the pilot will know where we're going. And many years later, my husband John and I were godparents for Melissa, a great niece of ours, and at Collier Street United Church, and I said to my sister, Is that Mr. Knox in the choir? And she said yes, and I went up to speak to him, and I said, uh, you probably don't remember me, and the first words out of his mouth was, do you know where Africa is yet? <laughs> oh, I certainly do. I wanted to be a nurse, but uh, that um, I got accepted at St. Michael's as a registered nurse's assistant and this is your mother being kind of ornery. My father bought me a beautiful suitcase to take with me, and I thought, you think you're getting rid of me? I'm not going. I cut off my nose to spite my face. Because I was born in 1936, the Second World War was a big part of my life. I remember the day it ended as if it was yesterday. We were out at noon hour at school playing Red Rover, Red Rover, and the nun come running out saying, school's over, the, uh, the war's over, school's out for the day, go home. None of my relatives were in it at all, but it, I, I remember it. Um, there, our food was rationed, and I did not like butter, and my mother would share, give my butter rations each. You were allotted a coupon for each sugar, butter, for each child and adult in your house and we didn't use much butter but we used a lot of sugar so my mother would uh, trade the butter coupons with our neighbor for their sugar because they didn't use sugar uh, and you learned how to use less uh, because it was rationed. Um, and, and remember that very well as well. It was uh, poodle skirts with crinolines, uh, ponytails, um, saddle shoes with, uh, we call them bobby socks, uh, ponytails in your hair, and we would turn a cardigan sweater, put it on backwards, and do the buttons up at the back with a neckerchief around your neck, a little hanky, and it was um, cool, things are cool, daddy-o, um, 
Um, gosh, it's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Pat Boone wasn't there when I was a teenager, was he? Um, Kevin, it would be country and western, um, way back, Red Savine, um, Eddie Arnold. Hmm. When I was working at the CNR restaurant, um, there was this young, handsome dude called John Workman who worked midnights, who thought he was God's gift to women, and the manager wanted me to go bowling with him, as with Bill, the manager, and his wife, Greed, and I said, no way. And then uh, quite a few years later, my sister gave birth to a little girl on January the 28th, 1958, and um, I called a cab to pick up my mother, and we went to the hospital to see Colleen, and who was driving this cab? But John Workman dropped my mother off, and then I lived in a place, Elmdale, a suburb of, of Barrie, and he questioned me, are you married yet? No. And dropped me off, and uh, the next day I went to get my hair cut, and I came home, and the girl I was living with said, somebody's been calling you all day. He went through the phone book to find out 52 Campbell Avenue, the address. Now, my girlfriend's last name was Dunnett. Uh, we went out. The first date would be the 30th of January. We're engaged by uh, mid-February, March, married July the 25th of 59 and had 38 good years of married life. So it ended up he wasn't God's gift to women, he was God's gift to me. We'd go to the show. Our favorite thing was to drive to Aurelia to a Chinese restaurant up there and have Chinese food. Or we'd park on the side of the road that the uh, drive-in was in and watch the movie and not pay for it. And you could hear from, from the speakers that we didn't have to pay for it, but saw the movies. That's... Uh, but it was mostly going to Aurelia or going to Toronto. We did a lot of driving, we did that. Um, no, when we got married, he was driving for Canada Drive. Uh, and that, I think we were only married a couple of weeks and he got laid off there and he started to work at the Copaco. As, as well. Well, he just told me one day he was going on a honeymoon. Such a romantic guy, and he asked me if I'd go on the honeymoon with him. And he had a ring and told me he loved me. Oh, the wedding day, it had rained the full week before, it was July the 25th, and I wanted long sleeves on my dress, it was satin, and everybody said, you won't, and the day of the wedding, I woke up, and the sun was shining very, very brightly, um, we got married at Collier Street United Church in Barrie, I did not meet John's mother until the wedding day and something very strange. Uh, his mother and my mother wore the identical same dress at, to the wedding. I, it was a uh, kind of a salad reception, no dance, uh, and um, we left and went to North Bay on for our honeymoon after uh, 
Uh, oh, and our best man, John had a um, automatic car, and Bill, our best man, couldn't drive the car. We're going going down to the photographer. We didn't have the photographer come to the church because my dad, seeing we didn't get married in the Catholic Church, just wouldn't pay for anything, so it was up to us, so we did it on the cheap, and we went to the photographer. Well, John had to get out of the back seat with me, and left. he left me and went to the front seat and was, drove us to the photographer and had to drive us back to the reception. was my sister, Rena. My bridesmaid was my girlfriend, Mabel Dunnett. Flower girl was Beverly Dunnett. Oh, the happiness. The, the very happy. The families getting to meet one another on and the relief. It's all over. The worries. It worked out. And not, you know, Bill not being able to drive the standard or the automatic car. His strength, his honesty, he had a way of putting other people before him um, there. That's what I remember. Uh, and his father, he was so good to you kids. That's what I remember. Very quickly, we were married nine months and a few days when you were born. It was <laughs> definitely nine months. Not that it would have mattered, but I had some answering to do, but... Um, trust. Um, being willing to get over an argument, uh, loyalty, that would be the same as trust. Having somebody that you're married to is your best friend, that you're not afraid to go and talk anything over with. Your name, you were to be Michael John. We went to visit your Uncle Stuart, and he asked what we were going to call the baby boy or girl. Well, I always liked the name Michael, and I said Michael John. I might have known you'd have put an, a dope name on him, and your dad said, you're not putting any Catholic name, and I... There was this movie star, Kevin Kikorin, and he was such a cute little gaffer. That's how I gave you, changed your name from Michael to Kevin, and I think you're more of a Kevin than you would have been a Michael. Uh, okay. Cindy, Cynthia Lorraine, I had no part in doing that. Your dad named Cindy. Uh, Michael came and I said, if he's a boy, it's going to be Michael and Michael James and James is after Grandpa Long. And that's how they, you got your names. John was born in Cookstown, June the 20th, 1935. Uh, they moved to Egbert when he was a teenager and he was only 17 when his father passed away and they had a turkey farm. Now his mother was going from Toronto to Sault Ste. Marie and met this 
man, uh, Jim Long, on the train, eventually got married, and he was grandpa to our kids. A little short man, wouldn't go 98 pounds soaking wet, but a sweetheart, and that's how come I called Michael Michael James after him. He used to pay the kids a nickel for every frog they'd catch that he would could go fishing with in the ditch across from his house on in Blind River. I had three children. Kevin, the oldest, was born May the 13th. 1960. It was a Friday afternoon. Um, he was a good kid. Um, the funniest thing he ever did when he had to change from Connaught Public School to Valleywood, he went to his teacher in grade four and said, you will have no trouble with me. I'm a straight A student. Uh, Cindy she was a hard one to raise. I remember my mother saying to me while I was growing up, I hope I'm alive to see you have a child just like you. And I think her wish came true. Um, to punish Kevin, you just had to say, you hurt my feelings, uh, and it worked. Cindy, nothing worked. Uh, then Michael came. He was our Centennial Project, uh, April the 8th, 1967, and he was very active. He walked just before he was nine months old, uh, had to have stitches when he was about nine months old, just after he learned to walk, broke his hip. Uh, to punish him would be, hey, you sit there for three seconds. That was punishment. Uh, very happy child. Oh, what don't I admire? I admire about you, Kevin. I admire how you put yourself through uh university, you had a goal, you met your goal, and you're still learning. Uh, Cindy, I admire the mother she is. She's a good mother. Michael, I admire his worth ethics. He doesn't have a lazy bone in his body. Oh, I loved Little Women, both the book and the movie, um, just because of the family values in it, where they all loved one another. The most difficult thing about growing older is sometimes the energy is not there when you want it to be there. And the best thing about growing older is you have time to do what you want to do and, and do it when you want to do it. Uh, to be true to themselves. Ollie was our first one. A uh, good game of euchre played in the courtyard waiting for her to be born. Her dad came out in tears that he didn't think Connie could last any longer, that the birth was, she was suffering in her labor. Kayla, um, I saw her after she was born. Uh, we weren't there at the hospital when she was born. Emma, Emma was really go a good one to have. She was born around the time John was dying, and it was, hey, it was happiness, bittersweet, and I can remember John, known as Pa, to Emma and Owen and Ava, 
taking the pictures the day after she was born. To show them at the hospital, at the chemo, he was so proud. After Emma came Alex, Michael's young lad. After Alex came Shannon. Am I right here? And after Shannon came Rebecca. And after Rebecca, the youngest is Ava, who is just a ball of fire, been the cutest, kept us smiling from the day she was born. It, it is Bozo and Ziggy. Now I called, um, called Bozo Bozo because she was such a clown as a child. Shannon, I called her Siggy before she was even born. I have to think of her name when I go. I don't know how come your kids never got <laughs> nicknames. Um, but that's the grandchildren, the light of my life. Um, Um, my wedding day was very happy. The birth of each of my children was very were very happy days. The birth of each of my grandchildren uh, were very happy. Uh, and watching my kids be happy makes me happy. the day your dad died. Lying on the road and Grand came in after I got knocked down by, by the boat that was on the highway and I was walking down the sidewalk with Jane and the downrigger gave way on this boat and wrapped around my leg and threw me out in front of a car. That was very scary. Um, J December the 31st, 1999, the year of the millennium. Um, my brother Dennis, who is next in age above me now, when he was 15, he was serving gasoline at Heart Service Station on Bradford Street in Barrie, and he lit a cigarette, and he literally blew up. He had third-degree burns to 90% of his body. Uh, they were from his neck, and his shoes were burnt. And he fought to live. He fought to learn how to walk again. He was in the hospital for months. And he made it. And uh, another hero I have is my maternal grandfather, who we call Baba. He was helping at 74. Somebody, some farmer, built a barn and he fell through the roof onto the concrete floor and pretty well paralyzed him from the waist down and he was told he would never walk again. Now, I can remember the day it happened, but I don't remember how long it took this to happen. He had always said, uh, my grandma's name was Minnie, and he always said Minnie's Christmas gift was going to watch him walk again, and he was told, forget it, it wouldn't happen, 
Well, lo and behold, Christmas morning, Baba walked out to where Grandma was without his crutches, and he never looked back from there. And at 74, he fought hard, and I just admired him for that. Well, my typical day, um, I get up and it all depends. I'm very, very active at, at the church and if there's a funeral I have to work, I work it. Or a UCW meeting, I carpet bowl, not daily. And if there's nothing up, I either go for, well, I do go for a walk or I knit or bake and that's how I put my day in. Family is most important uh, because where would you be without family? Yeah, taking you kids camping in the summers and watching you be free along the river or lake wherever we went camping and you kids choosing some years where we're going for vacation uh, to Ottawa. I don't think you ever chose, but um, making um, the camping trips with you kids. A good life is make the best of what you have and being happy with what you have. That's success. It's not a bank account and it's friends, having friends. Uh, you've, you've had a successful life. Cindy is like me with her stubbornness. Uh, she's very stubborn. Um, your dad and Michael, they've got both parents in them uh, very much. Uh, your dad is only a phone call away. Um, Michael, I think Michael's, Michael's happy with whatever little bit he has and um, your dad pa was like that and so was I you make the best of what you what you have I'd go back to 24 when I got married and then that started having my children and then the grandchildren, I'd love to relive that all over again from day one. I like to be thought of as a kind, caring, great sense of humor that people that should know they're loved by me. Do know it. <laughs> we do know it. <laughs> I saw an Italian film about a tiger drinking milk and it gave me such a headache I had to take an aspirin. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Kevin, you're me. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a drink just an hour ago and it's gone right to my head. Oh, for the day that gave babies away with a half a pound of tea. Oh, for the day that gave babies away and they had to give three to me. Very good. So I think that's it. Good. Thanks, so Mom. will Great I send job. thank you? Will I if you're out on the road, feeling lonely and so cold, all you have to do is come.
after, me? Yes, after I say okay. this, you say it for the camera, okay? I saw a film about a tiger eating milk, <laughs> or drinking milk. I saw... You're making fun of me. I, I saw, saw... Actually, and... wait, wait, no. I saw an Italian film <laughs> about a tiger drinking milk. I saw an Italian film about a tiger drinking milk. <laughs> Perfect. That's excellent. That's what you'll remember me for. Aww. Uh, that was awesome. Oh, it was. You did a great job, Grandma.